big win, but obviously a big accomplishment for Steph, especially uh, given your guys' relationship. How happy were you for him and how happy was the squad when he came to the locker room? We kind of saw some footage of, of him running in and everyone going crazy. Yeah, um, you know, first I want to send my you know, regards to um, my prayers for Jamal. Um, you know, anytime you see that kind of stuff, is is not fun. Um, you know, you don't wish that on anybody. Um, so speedy recovery for him. I'm sure he'll get back, um, you know, with the proper uh, training and whatnot. But amazing night uh, for a lot of reasons. And, and obviously, you know, seeing Steph take care of business, you know, on a nightly basis, uh, which is something I focused on. I focused on all year not really caught up in the tabloids of the playoff positioning and how guys are playing or any of that. I mean, this guy's, you know, we talk joy in buckets and he's out there every night given whatever circumstance and putting his best foot forward, you know, really staying in the moment and enjoying it. Um, and it's just an ode to, you know, what he's, what he's been through, you know, how he's expressed himself on the court. Uh, I was here back in 2012, you know, when he got 54 in Madison and, you know, all those amazing games and, you know, the full circle, you know, what, nine years later, I'm passing Wilt Chamberlain, the guy that averaged 50 uh, in, in a couple seasons as, you know, a franchise leading scorer. So, uh, you know, I think if we, we focused on, you know, kind of what he's done this year, I think it would be a totally different tone around the organization. Uh, you know, but it's just, you know, it's nobody's fault. So it's human nature to kind of want to nitpick and, and try to be perfect in every other regard. But if we, you know, kind of lean into him and, and, and the season he's had, you know, I think we'd be in a totally different uh, brain space. And I think after tonight, I think we should just, I said every time I'm in front of a camera, or we should just really appreciate what this man is doing right now. It's just, it's unreal. Um, I know how my body felt tonight, and it didn't feel like I could get 53 points. So I'll leave that at that. I see you, Molly, with the Curry shirt on. Yes, sir. Hello, Kent. Hope you are doing well. I would like to ask you how, what it means for you to be part of such a special night, such a historical night for Steph and uh, the whole organization of Warriors. And from your perspective, why Steph is so special player on and off the court? I mean, I mean it's really hard to put into words, you know, kind of, the gravity he has on life, um, you know, obviously he's human, but um, you want to talk about a guy with, with great intention, um, always looking to uplift, um, you know, doesn't really, you know, he handled what he has going on in, in his life uh, with the utmost respect. And, you know, he holds everyone around him to a higher standard. You know, he, he puts in a ton of work and, you know, you know, subliminally he, he's not going to kind of point at you and say, Hey, you know, work harder, but, you know, he expects that from you. And um, I came out here back in, I think, September, and we got after it. And I've been, you know, hunting greatness all season, trying to keep up with him, getting the lifts in after the game, coming in, you know, just pushing myself just to kind of, you know, stay in this trail. And, you know, it's paid off, you know, tremendously. Um, just how, you know, mentally uh, the fortitude I've gained throughout this year, you know, just, you know, watching – you know, as a teammate, um, as a friend, spending time with him off the court, uh, just in his ear, asking questions about parenthood, fatherhood, uh, just learning everything I can because, you know, you you can't really take moments like this for granted. Uh, and, you know, it's, basketball is, is, you know, he's great at it, but, you know, if you really get to dive into his train of thought, uh, who he wants to be, uh, you know, his aspirations on life, you know, it's just it's way deeper than – him scoring buckets, man, it's, 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 it's incredible. And uh, I'm saying again, just appreciate what you, you know, what you kind of got in front of you right now. Ken, Patrick Murray from Forbes Sports. I'm just wondering, you referenced you were here kind of a long time ago when uh, Steph was dropping 54 at Madison Square Garden. What's it like to see someone pass Wilt Chamberlain, <laughs> uh, who you were kind of playing with nine years ago? Did you have any sense then as great as he was kind of in that season coming out, that he would be able to achieve this level of this level of greatness? Well, I know my rookie season, I was averaging about four minutes a night. And I think he was probably mid-30s. And 
I would have to get my shots up at the practice for an hour and a half, two hours, and he'd be on the other end of the court. Same thing, you know, playing playing a ton of minutes, but his work ethic is just unreal. I mean, I never forget we had, we're at Harrison Barnes' uh, wedding in Rhode Island. Steph flies in from an Asia tour with Under Armour and grabs a, p a set of rental clubs and shoots 76 on a course he'd never seen before. And, you know, that alone is just like, dude, what in the world? You know, like, <laughs> you fly all the way across, you know, the continent, you know, and, and you know, you come out and, and do something like that. I mean, it's just so many stories that kind of lead up to um, – you know how tremendous he is as a, as a human being and I'm just grateful that you know as an undrafted guy uh, you know we formed a bond that's, that's kind of uh, grown in its own right over the past couple of years and uh, we've gotten any clo uh, even closer and uh, I, I'm just appreciative man I, I mean there's not much you can you know it's just hard to describe it you know you gotta you gotta feel that that force. Draymond had 18 tonight. What does it do for you guys when, when he gives you a scoring punch like that? Oh, we're, we're a totally different basketball team. Um, and it, it, he's, he's, I, I work, I work out with him. Uh, I work out before him on the court game day and he's out there working on that J he's shooting it, uh, with a ton of confidence. And, um, uh, you know, if he gets that going, it's a totally different dynamic. Cause now, you know, you can't really sag off, you know, he's always going to make the right play, uh, with the dimes you look at, you know, run he had with the assist. And now guys are trying to, you know, play off on him. He's making them play with the tray ball, with floaters in the lane. Uh, he's doing a lot for us. He, in the third quarter tonight, he pushed the pace for us. And uh, we kind of caught him off guard. They came out of the locker room in cement shoes, and uh, we had our track shoes on ready to roll, and he was a big part of that. It's William Hammers with Sports Fans Rap. I'm just curious, um, your thoughts on the, the last game with no fans, and, and what's it going to do for you the next time you're in that stadium with – with some fans in there. I'm fired up. Yeah, I'm fired up. I mean, this is one of the best places to play. You know, the, the Bay Area has been uh, amazing um, as far as the support. Um, you know, they put behind the Warriors over the years, and we've been in other arenas where they've had that, uh, you know, support. It's been kind of a, a home, somewhat of a home game for us because they're all cheering for the Warriors anyways. But it would be good to kind of get, uh, you know, our fans back here. I'm sure the Warriors fans out there have been missing – um, you know, missing watching us play in person. You know, they're all on TV. They they tweet us out there every game. Uh, you know, the support has been good. Um, so uh, just looking forward to getting them in here and, you know, continue to put on a show for them.